Hey everybody, it's Roberta here. And if you don't know me, I am a bar exam success coach and a licensed practicing attorney and the founder of the Blessed and Barred Bar Exam Success System. And so today I have one of our clients from Blessed and Barred to talk about her experience with taming her time. And to give you a quick intro before we jump into this interview, the Blessed and Barred Bar Exam Success System is three steps. The first step is to start with your map, your mindset, affirmations, and prayers. So that is about getting your mind right and your faith up so that you can even have, you know, the right mindset to be able to do what it is that you need to do for this bar prep journey. The second step is to tame your time. And that's not only about time management, but also about life management. And this is especially important for people who are working full time while studying for the bar exam, because as you know, time is limited. Um, so you need to make sure that you're using it the best way you can. And so this step is all about, you know, taking that intentional time at first to do your planning right. So then that way you're not just jumping in to studying, not really knowing what you're doing, but you know, you're being strategic at the beginning um, with what you're doing with your time. So we have number one, start with your map. Number two, start with, excuse me, we have number one, start with your map. Number two, tame your time. And then number three is to strategize your studying. And that's where we get into study strategies and writing workshops that I have and all of, you know, that specific things for the MBE, the essays, the MPT. But like I said, this interview is going to focus on the importance of taming your time. And so, like I said, we have a current client of Blessed and Bard on who felt it was put on her heart. <laughs> she was like, other bar exam takers need to know this um, about what it's like, you know, working full time and, and studying for the bar exam. So the first question that I'm going to ask um, is, yeah, how how is it working full time and studying for the bar exam? What has the experience been like for you? And where has, um, you know, taming your time fit into that? Well, working full time and studying um, has been, in my opinion, very challenging. Challenging in the sense of what we're talking about today, taming my time. In my opinion, the biggest, it has been the biggest challenge because you know for a fact you're going to go to work, you're going to work at least eight hours, maybe a little overtime, but at least eight hours. And so you know that you have to complete or is recommended that you complete a, a specific, a minimum amount of um, study hours each day if you're working full time, right? So you know you have that eight hour window that you absolutely have to do this and then you have to figure in the suggested hours for bar prep. So for me, um, I struggled on the front end with the balance of the two, right? So I knew I was gonna go to work and do work and then um, when it came time for me to get off of work, I knew I needed to put in at least the recommend the recommendation is at least four hours per day if you're working full time. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's the standard uh, recommendation for um, those working full time. And so it was the so for me, it didn't feel like four hours was going to be hard to manage after working full time until I was doing it right. And so when I was in the mm -hmm. thick of it and and doing it, um. And I noticed that, you know, depending on the day, I didn't have a lot of energy after work to do a full four hours. Um, and then I noticed that sometimes I just mentally was not in the right headspace to study um, the four hours after work. And so because I am a B, a blessed and barred student, I, I might use B and B, um, but that's what I mean, blessed and barred. Um, because I am a B and B um, client, I even though I had the program and I was working right, I wasn't 
in the in the moment utilizing the resources like I needed to because I didn't feel like I had enough time I know right so (laughs) I was like (laughs) okay it wasn't until I think about two weeks two to no three weeks and into me trying to go by my own schedule my own study schedule and work that I realized I wasn't managing my time properly and so I'm sorry. Did I have I just run off and not answered the question? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're doing good. You are. You are still answering the question. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> and so it, after week three of me trying to do it on my own and within my own strength, which is also a no, no, right? Like trying to do it within my own strength. Right. Um, that's when I realized I, I, I wasn't achieving the results I needed, right? And meeting my goals. And so I reached out to Roberta and I was like, listen, I need help. I need help. Help me get on the right track um, because I knew it was a problem. Um, And one thing about bar prep is you have to, you have to um, achieve a specific amount. You have to be making a specific amount of progress for each study study session, right? And so I knew that I had been doing it for three weeks and I still had not, I had not achieved or reached my pers- my goals that I had and I had not been um, getting the required hours in, which is, that becomes a really big problem because you have to be making the progress. Each study session, you need to be making progress. And so I just had to put my foot down and utilize my resources. And so- that's when I had the one-on-one with Roberta and she was recommending the three-step process to me. And so at that time, at that time frame, at that moment, I realized, okay, this is what I need to do. Let me take a step back. Now, keep in mind, I had tried to do it for myself for the first three weeks, right? And I had, I was unsuccessful. I was very unsuccessful. And so I had to take a step back and invest the time in doing the three-step process because I realized um, that's, I realized taking the time out to do step one, taking the time out to do step two, step three, that um, it was going to be the the focus and the discipline that I needed. And it was going to give me the structure that I needed. And so it became for me, very important to follow the B and B program to the T, right? And so <laughs> Roberta and I had the one on one, and so she gave me a lot of recommendations and suggestions on how to tame my time, how to um, go back and look at my responsibilities and my obligations, and to look at uh, and be realistic with my goals, um, and to really just sit down and have that that hard conversation with myself okay what can I what can I actually do during my study time right what how much time do I have to dedicate to studying and making sure that whatever responsibilities I had that those responsibilities were going to yield the results I needed for a bar prep because what I realized is I had a lot of things on my plate that weren't that, that weren't conducive to me succeeding and thriving in bar prep. Mm-hmm. So I had to take a step back and reassess my obligations so that I could have create that, create a sound um, study schedule um, to get the results that I needed. And so week four of me incorporate, so I incorporated the three-step process during week four of my um of my own personal bar prep um study schedule and that's when I began to see the progress the progress in me just having a structured schedule the process in me actually feeling like I were I was getting things accomplished during my study sessions and um I could just really tell a difference in my attitude I uh I I, I I joke and say I put my whole life on D and D. Do not disturb. <laughs> so um, I think that was really beneficial for me taming my time. And so for me, I was able to um, because Roberta also suggested that I do a um I um a review of the things that I'm spending my time on daily, in addition to working like. What else am I doing? So I noticed that, okay, during the workday, I might text a friend back 
or in the morning time, I might respond to text messages or I'll have conversations um, during the daytime. You know, those things, they took up a lot of my time and I didn't realize it until I started really just nailing down and um, reviewing the things that I was spending my time on. And so in the name of taming my time, I had to cut out a lot of that um, a lot of those things that were not conducive to me being efficient with my time, for me being present during the hours of work and for me being present during bar prep. So I really um, just got serious about utilizing the Blessed and Bar program. And I think that, no, I know that it has been life-changing and I have seen so many um, results in my performance and my my morale my confidence. I don't, you all don't know me, but I'm very confident now, confident because I have a more structured schedule. Um, and so I actually feel like I'm making progress. Whereas um, before I really got serious about the program, I didn't feel like I was making a lot of progress. And so I think that answered the first question. <laughs> <laughs> It did. No, you you gave a word. This was this was great. You had so many good nuggets, and you you were able to answer like four questions within this one question. And yes, you still okay. did answer the first question. <laughs> yes. Great. Okay. Okay. Awesome. You did. You did. And so I just want to follow up um, mm -hmm. with with a couple things about what you said. You know, you mentioned about how you had to to take a step back, mm -hmm. and this. I'm not the one who originated the saying. I heard I heard this from someone else, but somebody else was saying that um, you know, in general, it like you sometimes it's like a slingshot. You know, with a slingshot, like you have to pull the what is it like a stone or something? The slingshot, you know, you have to pull it right. back mm -hmm. before you can let go and it'll launch forward. Yes. Yes. This this is what is happening here. Like this also has to happen with bar prep mm -hmm. um with your bar prep planning and that's also what team your time is about because like you said and you are not the only one like a lot of people the first thing they want to do when it's like well I mean not that people necessarily want to study but you know what I mean like the first thing when right. you're like all right <laughs> now I am right. studying like when people are thinking of bar prep they're like okay I'm just jumping in the books all right towards here we go okay I'm just I'm just, you know yep. and a lot of times people don't stop to think like really think through mm -hmm. what they're spending their time on what their life looks like like what their priorities are like what their energy levels are like like you, and that's why at the beginning I said tame your time it's not just time management it's not just all right you get a pretty planner, you know, to, you know, write things down. And like, it's also life management because life is still happening while you're studying. Um, you know, life, life still be life in and life in, yes. yes, you know, so, so like that also goes into tame your time. And I'm so happy you also brought up about morale and stuff, because that's why, you know, start with your map mindset, affirmations and prayer is number one, because, you aren't even going to implement the things that will help you if you're not in the right mind space. You're not going to be able to focus during your study session if you're not in the right, right mind space. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to take that step back so you can be like a slingshot <laughs> and move forward if you're not in the right mind space. So like, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you felt it on your heart to be like oh I need to tell the people like <laughs> it's it's early yeah. in bar prep now like at the time we're recording this it's October y'all it's like October 20 something um mm -hmm. when we're when we're um recording this so a lot of people have not started bar prep yet um you know for the February exam but I will say this if you are studying uh if you are working full-time you do want to get your study in more than, you know, three months out. Like, you know, for regular bar prep, if you are preparing for the bar exam full time, like that's, you know, the only thing you're doing, you're not also working, then you can get away with spending, you know, only like two months, two and a half months studying or whatever. But if you work in full time, four, five, maybe even six months out, you need to start <laughs> your, your bar prep, especially because, you know, like we talked about, um, you know, like you mentioned, 
you know, the first three weeks, you're kind of just like, you know, doing whatever. And it wasn't until yeah. week four, <laughs> you know, you really like was like, all right, let me do, let me do bless the bar for real, you know? And like, <laughs> that's why it's also important um, for people who are, who are studying and working, you have to give yourself that extra time. Like, I know, you know, especially if, um, you know, it's, if, uh, you know, if you're listening and, um, you are, uh, retaking the exam or, you know, you're, you're taking it another time. I know thinking about the bar exam is not something you necessarily want to do. You, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good thinking about the bar exam and you kind of want to put your prep off for that. Um, and by you, I mean, you know, just like the general collective you, <laughs> people listening, whoever this, this applies to. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, Oh, go ahead. This, this, what you're saying is speaking to something that I have to get off my chest. Like good, go ahead. Okay. So as far as starting early, this for me, for me, starting early uh, was my main goal. Um, mm-hmm. When I knew I was going to sit for February, I knew I needed to start early because as you all, as I said earlier, it took me three weeks to get adjusted to work mm-hmm. on studying, right? Which three weeks, that's a month, right? Yeah. <laughs> you need that buffer. You need the yeah. buffer before your traditional bar course starts if you're doing a traditional bar course. So you need a buffer between when you officially start your bar course and getting transitioned into studying and, uh, and adapting and adjusting to studying and working. Because for me, um, it was a major adjustment and I had a deep learning curve. So mm-hmm. starting early has been beneficial for me. And um, because the the thing is, when the bar prep course officially starts for me, it's going to officially start in November. I will have already gotten really adjusted to going to work and coming home to study. Right. right? And starting to study in the morning time. Like I will be really, I will already have that, um, that like my mindset will already be set, like set in stone. So nine times out of 10. And what I expect is that when my official bar prep course starts, I'm going to be ready to go. Like, okay, we're yeah. doing this, this and this. I will have conditioned my body. I will have conditioned my mindset. And I will know for a fact that this is what we're going to do. So I won't have to um, be getting distracted. Or if if life throws me a curveball, I won't be thrown off as much, right? Because I've conditioned myself in advance to do this, this, and this. Which for me now, um, after working with Roberta... <laughs> for like the last two weeks about taming my time in particular, I I discovered um, in this uncomfortable position of, you know, having to take a step back and then jumping back into um, finding a schedule that works for me, I discovered that I couldn't physically um, do complete four hours of bar prep in the evening time when I got off of work, like physically and mentally, I couldn't do it. So after speaking with Roberta and after reviewing my obligations and being realistic with myself, um, I discovered that, hey, I'm the sharpest in the morning time and I'm an early riser. So for me, studying in the morning time before I go to work um, is that's one set of um, that's one study session. And then when I get off of work in the evening, that's a second study session for, so for me, I had to break the four hours, the four hours up until into two study sessions, one in the morning and one in the evening. And I found that that works better for me. And so I've been doing the morning and the evening schedule consistently for about two full weeks now. And like um, I mentioned earlier, my morale has improved drastically my motivation has improved drastically because not only am I taming my time but I'm also using the resources in the um blessed and barred um um in the um in the on, on online for the program so I'm using those resources so for instance um I was telling Roberta okay I'm having issues with the review process so she recommended um I um 
she recommended some resources in the library that I that will be helpful to me for review. So, okay. So I started to use those different resources that she recommended. So once I started implementing those resources, plus timing my time, plus my body physically getting um, adjusted to working and studying consistently, I'm in a much better place now than I was three weeks ago. And it's solely because of Roberta and the Blessed and Bar program, because <laughs> I don't know if you all can hear it in my voice, but I was a mess before I got serious about the program. And now I feel so much confident and uh, I'm much more confident and I'm much more um, focused and motivated to study because beforehand I was intimidated. Like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like studying. Like, oh, I don't want to do this, you know? And so now I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's yes. get it done. Let's go. Let's go. And so I start my study sessions, like um, getting my mindset together. I start my study sessions with um, prayer. I write in my prayer notebook in the morning time. I And what I, no- I normally do is, it just depends on how I'm feeling in the morning. So I'll normally um, go to the scriptures to lean on. I'll go to that resource in mm-hmm. the library and I'll pull some scriptures from there. Or I'll go to the um, prayer, the bar prayer um, recording and I'll listen. And I'll see what jumps out from there or I'll do one of the Bible plans. And so I'll just do something different in the morning, whatever I'm feeling, and I'll let that lead me. And then that's the scripture I'll um, stand on <laughs> yeah. for the day. And then I'll journal it in my prayer notebook. And then um, I'll go from there and then I'll start my study session. And so um, for me, that has been the most helpful for me. And I feel much more, I feel much better now. And to be completely transparent, I'm not where I want to be in my bar prep um, right now, as far as my schedule, because I had certain goals I wanted to reach. And I felt like I needed to be here by this time and here by that time. And I'm not because I'm doing my best. And so, but I'm giving myself more grace, which is a goal for me, because what I do know is that I have made a lot of um, progress and I've transitioned and I've um, I've just become much better with this whole taming my time. And so if nothing else, I've tamed my time and my time will be so tight. My schedule will be airtight by the time I start my official bar course. It's going to be airtight, right? So I don't care what's going on between November and February. I'm going to have an airtight schedule. And I know that I won't waver from that schedule because I've conditioned myself for it. So I said that to say this, even though I might be a little behind on my personal bar prep um, schedule as far as um, the subjects I want to complete by a certain day and and the um, different tasks I want to complete by a certain day. Even though I'm not really where I want to be there, I think that for me, the big picture of taming my time and um, incorporating the prayer and worship on the front end and and being strategic about using the resources, for me, I think that's going to take me, um, that's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be very helpful for me in the long run, right? So, and uh, another big thing for me is pacing myself. So I'm pacing myself now. So if I'm not where I want to be right now, I'm, I keep telling myself, you're going to be okay because you know that one, you're going to have an airtight schedule um, in November and you will have given yourself grace. You will have um, learned how to pace yourself. And so you're going to be good. And so um, what I'm saying is I am paying attention and appreciating the small progress that I'm making because I know that sp- small progress is going to um, be equivalent to major progress when I do start my official bar course so for me I think that I'm making a lot of progress and I'm definitely not where I started amen amen (laughs) yes yes amen and I'm glad you jumped in when you did because you said what I was gonna say actually about how you know you starting your prep early gives you that time to, you know, you can do your trial and error. You figure out, oh, this doesn't work. Oh, Lord, help. I need to do exactly. something else. <laughs> you know, gives you time to figure that out. It also gives you time to, like you said, you know, condition yourself to actually get used to being on this new schedule. Um, you know, you also get used to, like, you you realize what you can and can't do, especially with working, like, <laughs> exactly. okay. you know, yeah, so, like, it, 
it takes sometimes it, it takes some time to to figure that kind of stuff out so you know it's so good that you started doing that early and i mean you're actually still ahead because you did because even though you know for your personal goals you feel like all right there's more that i wanted to do by this point you're actually still ahead because you even I'll started take- before your bar prep course started <laughs> I think, listen, I'm thankful for whatever progress I'm making because, yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I, I just want to just reiterate that starting early is the best recommendation I have because I think that for me and some of my friends who are also preparing for the bar exam, we, like you said, we don't think about we don't think about planning and thinking a process through and um, thinking it through as in thinking about the planning process. That's not mm-hmm. something that we, that I um, really thought was important until now. So I'm pretty sure there's someone out there like me that's thinking, okay, I just need to jump. I need to dive in. Like you said, it's torts, con law, contracts. I just need to dive in, do so many MBEs and so many MEEs and, and then mm-hmm. that bring up. But no, at, at, no, take it from me, everyone. Um, the planning process is, is so important and such a very essential process because it will help you be more organized and be more efficient in the long run. So I think that even if you don't, whenever you listen to this recording, if you start right after you listen to this recording, you're still ahead of the game because you're yeah. starting early so anytime between now and whenever the bar courses start in november and the bar courses that start in november well i'm starting in november because i requested a early start so most bar prep courses are going to start in december so Mm -hmm. whoever starts in november with me with an early start listen if we can get in if you can get in and get started now just to work out the kinks you're ahead of the game because it has helped me tremendously and honestly it's ha- it has really built my confidence about the exam in general yeah. so now I'm like okay it's not that bad you know yes <laughs> I, thought I would say that about the bar exam <laughs> well okay it's not that bad um and I can do this so yeah 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 (laughs) yes 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 to all of that and you know for the future for people who are listening if you are taking the july exam then you know you you know, like March, April or whatever, if you're taking the July exam. So this applies for whether you take in the February exam or the July exam. And like, yes, the big overall takeaway message here. Yes, don't sleep on the bar prep planning. Like taking the time on the front end to to figure this stuff out will actually end up saving you time later on this way you're not like in the actual you know bar review course and you still trying to figure out the stuff that you could have figured out (laughs) you know before so yeah I just um oh I I did want to just for anyone who's listening and you're unfamiliar with uh blessed and barred so the blessed and barred bar exam success system like it's the three steps that I mentioned and it's also like I built out a course portal. So there's like an online thing that you can go to that has these resources that you can refer to. It's it's like organized by section. Um, There's like specific things that I provide for each section of the exam, like how to create your own study strategy system, um, which is also something that you do that that goes along with taming your time. Um, There's also a community of other bar exam takers as well. So you don't have to go through it alone. There's there's a lot that is included with Blessed and Bar because it's really meant to be like an all-encompassing program to help you with, you know, your mental, your spiritual, your emotional, you know, your physical, your academic, like all of those different aspects for the bar exam. Because, you know, if you've ever studied for a bar exam before, like, you know, or even if, you know, you just started now, like, you know, it it's not just a regular exam. Like it really does take so many different parts of you (laughs) to do, (laughs) to take. Um, And so that's why, you know, Blessed and Bard is 
is um you know multifaceted like that so in the description box you can click the link I'll, I'll drop a link so you can learn more about blessed and barred um and also uh um I also founded Grace to the Grind Career Mastermind, and that's like a, a free online community for Christian women, lawyers, law students, and bar exam takers. And we have weekly group devotionals, like um, was mentioned earlier, you know, the Bible plans. We have group devotionals that we do together. And a lot of times I'll pick topics that relate to what you may be feeling during your bar exam journey, like, you know, fear, anxiety, um, you know, building up confidence building up faith, you know, prayer. So we do group devotionals on those types of topics. Um, yeah, like just, you you just got to get in there to see <laughs> if you haven't seen it yourself. So the links will be be down in the description of this. Um, but yeah, before we hop off, um, is there anything else that you would like to share with um, anyone listening? Yes, um, I'm looking at some of my personal notes where I jotted down um, where I started in the process and where I am now. And I would say when you, when it comes to um, when it comes to reviewing your responsibilities and obligations and, and, and really doing an audit, that's the word I'm looking for, audit of your time. I think that um, we need to I think that most people need to look at. Um, what are you doing outside of work? As in, like I said, I didn't realize responding to text messages was so time consuming, like responding to text messages, sending voice notes to text text messages was, it, it's so time consuming. And I love my friends and my family, but um, I think Roberta said it best. Um, right now, my main focus is the bar exam. And so, you know, I had to have those hard conversations with my family and with my friends and just let them know, hey, my whole life is on D&D. Do not disturb. So if it's not 911, I mean, you know, I'll holler at you later <laughs> and I'll respond to this message um, when I get around to it. But I think that things like that, looking at how much time you spend text messaging, how much time you spend scrolling on social media, how much time you spend just doing whatever that's not, you know, a part of your schedule, which I know it sounds so bad, right? Like, oh my gosh, I have to go by a strict schedule. But for me, um, that was, that's what was required for me to get the results I needed in bar prayer, right? Like, oh my gosh, it, I didn't realize it until I actually had to buckle down and do it. So I would say be realistic when you do your time audit so you can see where you can cut out some things and incorporate other things. I believe, um, Roberta, what is the document I used when I did that um I did the um, review of my time. I think things that I need to keep, things that I need to stop doing. Um, there is a resource in the um, library and I used the out, I used the handout, which I don't have it on hand right now, but it was very helpful for me. So what I did was um, I wrote down, okay, the things that I'm doing that are okay. And then I wrote down the things that I need to stop doing and the things that I need to continue doing. And so when I wrote that out, and saw it in writing, I was able to see, okay, this is where I need to cut this out. This is where I need to add more of this, or this is where I need to keep doing this because I'm doing a great job. And so I think writing down, um, writing down your time audit, what you're doing with your time, I think that's very beneficial. And also being realistic for me, and you know that um, lawyers, uh, law students, we always think we're like superheroes and we have these superpowers and we can do anything and that we go, 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 like energize our bunnies. But we also have to be mindful of, like he said, like Roberta said, our energy, um, our emotions and all of that. That takes these different responding to text messages and doing other things outside of bar prep work. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of like mental, <laughs> mental capacity and emotion capacity and so you need that that mental and that emotional you need that energy that it requires you need to put that into bar prep so I think that being mindful of those things as well is going to be very important when you're um, doing an audit on your time because I didn't realize how much my emotions Mm -hmm. were taking up so much of my time oh my gosh it's a blessing blocker <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a blessing blocker which is also um, a term 
used in the library. So I realized a lot of my blessing blockers and I started blocking those blockers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I needed to um, really get a whole a grip on my time. And so I think that being realistic is very important and knowing that we're human. We are human. I know people yes. expect a lot of us as lawyers, as law students, and we just need to be realistic and realize, you know, in this moment, in this season, it's all about bar prep and it's only temporary. This is a, such, this is a short time that we're going to have to do this and joy comes in the morning. And so I, I keep telling myself, this too shall pass. It's only temporary and joy comes in the morning. And so if I need to um, respond to my friends later, see my family members later or whatever the case may be, just to get through this short period of my life, I'm going to make that sacrifice because let's be honest, we've been making those sacrifices uh, for so many years through law school. So Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one more little small component of our life that we need to make the sacrifice and, and get what we need to get done so we can move on. And so for me, I would just say, be realistic and really be um, upfront and, and, and just really do a clear assessment to audit your time. And I think that you'll find that you can make a lot of changes and add a lot of time to your schedule by not doing certain things. And also I had to change my work hours. So um, yeah, I realized that too. So I realized uh, when I realized I was working nine to five and because I was working nine to five, it was affecting my physical and my mental with coming home, home and working in the evening to do studying. And so I changed my schedule to 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. And so I found that it is so much more beneficial for me. And so when I get off at four o'clock now, I have a little buffer before I start bar prep. So it has made a world of difference in my energy level and my morale, my performance. Um, And so I think that that's something else you can take a look at if you have that opportunity to change your work hours or, you know, make some changes like that. I think that you'll find that those are some things that'll help you in the um, long run and self-care, 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 self-care. I think that it's very important that Mm -hmm. we incorporate self-care now um, we start it early. So once you get into bar prep fully, you'll already have that, um, you'll already have that nail down that you're important too, and that you need to take care of yourself. So start incorporating those positive habits now. So when you start bar prep, you've already conditioned yourself and it's a part of your lifestyle. So for me, I think that that's the most important thing is to make it a part of my lifestyle right now. Um, so that I'll be realistic about doing it. Let's just be honest. Yes. If you don't incorporate it into your life like that, or because what I used, I used to look at bar prep like a task. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, it's so daunting. Like, I don't want to do it. And then once I got my Jesus in check and my B and B lifestyle in check, I really started living a blessed life and really thinking about the bar in a different way. And so it stopped being a task. But rather for me, a blessing to like a lot of people say it's a blessing to take the bar exam. So it started being a blessing for me to have the opportunity to take the bar exam. So I just want to say to utilize the resources in the Bliss and Bar uh, library and the Grace for the Grind library. Those resource, resources are so important. The Bible plans, join the group Bible plans because they have been life changing for me. And it's always good to see other um women in the group commenting and you know or encouraging others you know because it's things I for me when you know that someone else is going through and getting through the same situation you're in I think it gives you I know it gives you motivation to keep going and, and it helps you to see that okay you know I can do this and so I think that being very active And the Grace for the Grind um, on the blog has been very helpful for me as well, because I'm always, you know, um, utilizing the resources. I'm always uh, connecting with the women on the blog. And I'm always, you know, just trying to read up on different things and trying to have a better attitude about the whole process, because it is difficult and it's a very challenging time in life. And so um, I think that this positive platform is what I needed the most in my life. And I think it's making a difference in my overall 
outlook about the exam and the entire process because it is more than just studying for an exam. It's a it's the mindset, it's the the attitude, the gratitude, and you got to have your Jesus in check and your emotions in check. And so I'm I'm a work in progress, but thank God that I'm 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 learning and that I'm getting better. So that's my two cents. Amen. 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 Yeah. This was this was so good. I'm I'm gonna just throw just a couple more things and then we'll wrap up because <laughs> I know you know we we want to tame our time and not be on too long. I mean, but I'm sure everybody listening is like, this was good. This was good to me. I need to hear this. Like I this was this was so good. So I just want to reiterate, and I'm so happy that you said this that you know you mentioned like a blessed lifestyle and something that I've been that I've really realized is that, you know, Blessed and Barred is more than just a bar exam coaching program. You know, it's more than just, you know, an an online platform. Like it is legitimately, legitimately a lifestyle because even after you pass the bar, you are indeed going to be blessed and barred. (laughs) Amen. Amen. (laughs) Amen. So like, it really isn't just like, I'm just doing this to pass the bar exam. Like all of these things that we're talking about, th- talking about that you incorporate, you know, like improving, you know, your your spiritual life, your relationship with God, you know, your foundation in Christ, you know, like, like get, being able to get your emotions in check, being able to realize what do you spend your time on? What are your priorities? What kind of boundaries do you have, you know, as a Christian woman? Because a lot of times Christian women, our boundaries just be not not there but, exactly. <laughs> but yep. god god has boundaries you know what i mean like there's stuff that you're supposed to do and not do so like <laughs> anyway <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that you know we talk about in blessed and bardy and we have the exercises you know like was previously mentioned that allows you to like sit and like see it in writing like to be able to do that kind of assessment for yourself you know we have those kinds of exercises and lessons for you to do but anyway my point is all of these things that we're talking about is not only for the bar exam, but it's for life. You know, as a practicing attorney, as a Christian woman, as a wife, as a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, as a friend, you know, what whatever other roles you have in life, all of these things are relevant to you, um, are, are relevant to it. And yeah, you know, you'll have to make some, some move some things around in your schedule. You may not be responding to texts as soon as you get them, but you know, you can schedule some time to respond to them later. It's just that, you know, you need to keep, keep the momentum going with your studying, keep focused, <laughs> you know, minimize distractions okay. and you can schedule your fun time in later. You can still, there is still a way to still have fun as well. <laughs> Cause God, God said for us to, you know, rest. Amen. So you can still rest during bar prep as well. <laughs> yes, and I actually speaking of rest and having fun, I had some time with my family yesterday. Um, but I did add it to my schedule, and I made sure that before I had time with my family, that I studied in the morning time. And so I did have, I did, I was very intentional about adding my study time around my fun time with my family. So you're mm. right about that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this was so good i think it's been good um everybody whoever's listening let us know if this was good to you let us know um down in the comments and you know if you're not already in grace for the grind i hope to see you there if you are not already in blessed and barred i hope you consider joining blessed and barred as well the links for all of those things will be in the description box. And, you know, you, you, you've you heard us talk about it, but when you see it, you'll really see what we're talking about. Cause like, I didn't, this isn't a Facebook group, y'all. Like I have like an actual, like it's its own platform. Like it's, it's a whole thing. It's its own community. It's like its own social network, <laughs> you know, away from distractions, <laughs> Instagram and <laughs> Facebook and whatnot. <laughs> it's an experience. It's a, it's a vibe. Seriously. I think you said before it was given like big Esquire energy or something. Big you said Bark. <laughs> the big one, not the little one. Okay. Listen, big Esquire. <laughs> yes. So as we said, blessed and barred, it's, it's a lifestyle. Like it's a movement. It's a vibe. <laughs> so come join us. And yeah. 
Um, stay blessed and let's get barred. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Have a great evening. Thanks. You too. Bye.